Hi, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. This is Miss Rashumba, and greetings and welcome all to another segment of Let's Talk and Grow with Miss Rashumba. I have another guest here today, and I'm going to elaborate on who he is in a moment. But you know, there's a ritual I go through, and first I must give honor to our Creator, for which all things are and will forever be in this vast universe that we dwell in, Hashim. Secondly, my inspiration for this show was due in part to my dearly transcended friend, Mr. Early Laverne, who transcended in 2013. A Rainbow of Poem was his first book that I helped and had published for him. It is there our friendship took root. Here's his picture. That's right. And a friend he was, a poet, and an inspiration. His life reflects the intense struggle we often face as we navigate our lives in this system of our inheritance. As you know, I always begin with one of his amazing poems, for I am my brother's and sister's keeper. Today's poem is Stand Clear of Any Bad Situation by Mr. Early Laverne. Stand clear of any bad situation. Today, stand clear of any bad situation. Under any conditions, remain patient. Select circumstances that are healthy and right. Never provoke anyone into a fight. There's no harm toward being productive. Practice things which are constructive. See into things remaining in order. You are a positive model to your son or daughter. You can expect to see hard times. Don't fail to use effectively your mind. You are endowed with a powerful will. There isn't any greater thrill. As an adult woman or man, you must develop a masterful plan. Any vital things of which you conceive, you will fully achieve. A quality person is very admired. Do all you can to inspire. Continue to maintain strong motivation. Stand clear of any bad situation. Ashe, oh, ashe. So we always begin with one of Early's poems, and we end with one of mine. So, um, but now, I'm going to turn my attention to my guest today. My guest's name is Mr. Kevin. As you know, I always refer to my guests as Miss or Mr. And today, Mr. Kevin is my guest. Mr. Kevin, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. For agreeing, yeah, for agreeing to be a part of this monumentous movement. It's my pleasure. So, this show is called The Black Man Speaks. And we know the black man has a lot to say, but who often puts a mic in his front of his mouth unless he's playing some kind of ball or some kind of music in some way. So today, Mr. Kevin get to tell me his story. Who is Mr. Kevin? And why is your story important to us all? My story is somewhat of a complicated one. And at the same time, not so complicated. Okay, <laughs> complicated, but not so complicated. Okay, that's about right. That's kind of our story sometimes. Yeah. Um, at a young age, probably when I was 21, I uh, found myself in the middle of a, of a, a double homicide case. Mm. Mm. And it was a real political time. Around that time, uh, another major case that was going on that was getting national attention was the Scott Grace Peterson case. Okay. 
Okay. So the case that I found myself in has similar circumstances. Mm. And locally, it became not just a major issue in itself, but it became a racial issue because me and myself and the, and the, the other gentlemen that were uh, also caught up in this situation were all young and black. Yes. Whereas the Lacey Peterson case was structured around a white couple. Correct. And so even though it was a bad situation, um, there was a lot of uproar locally about how we were not getting the same type of attention mm. to our case, like the Peterson case. Was. Okay. Um, but. You speak a little higher, that yeah. would help the camera to hear okay. you. Uh, yes, I asked him to speak a little higher because it's so important what he's saying. I don't want us to miss out on anything. So this happened about 20 years ago, would you say? Uh, 2003. 2003. Right. And yeah. so, uh, the person that actually had committed the crime was underage. Mm. And again, because it was a political situation behind it, um, I was of age. So they used my name and my face and put it out there to sort of blow the case up mm. and try to stir up a lot of uh, a lot of stuff in the media. So I was, I was getting a lot of threats. My family was getting a lot of threats. Um, they thought I was the person that did it and I wasn't. Um, I was at the right place at the wrong time. Mm. I was at home oh. with, with my family. When this um, occurred? When it occurred. And they used you as the face? It occurred right outside of my home. Okay. That's why I said right place at the wrong okay. time. Okay, okay. Um, gotcha. Until they decided to charge the other person that actually did it as an adult, they used me in the meantime. So by the time they decided to finally charge him as an adult, at that time, they had reduced my charges to an accessory to a felony after the fact, meaning the crime had already been committed before I even knew anything about it. Um, there's some other details that's, yes. that's in there, but I didn't do it. I just got dragged along for the ride. Wow. So wow. Uh, long story short with that, they, uh, they ended up giving me some prison time for an accessory after the fact. And, uh, How much time did they give you? I was supposed to get two years with half, which by their calculations would have been 13 months. Mm. But I had uh, taken a little bit of time to uh, while I was fighting. And uh, so I stayed inside for a little bit while I was dealing with that because I knew they wasn't going to let me get a, send me home with nothing. They, were, they had objectives. Um, so the judge at the last minute decided to... Uh, make me do half of the time that was left instead of half of the whole time. Yeah. So I ended up doing 18 months altogether instead of the 13. As if your life had no value to you. Yeah, the, the judge didn't care. She, uh, she basically told me there was no way that I couldn't have not known what was going on. They didn't care about the circumstances. They didn't care about, you know, the truth. They never, they rarely care about the no, truth. No, no. You know? And, 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 um, that's part of the issue that we face as a people. Our lives have no value in this system. Mm -hmm. They didn't care that you had a family, people that loved you, and even your words being truthful to what you said. Right. And at the end of the day for them, it's, it's a business. It, it's, it's a business. Yeah. And that's why, I, I, audience, that's why it's important to know our history. Because if our life wasn't valuable when we were brought here some 200 or so odd years ago, 1619 to be exact, 400 years ago, why would they see the value in it now? And so it is going to be us that tell our story and value ourselves and connecting the dots back to what happened. You see, and I'm so sad to hear that that happened to you, young man, but obviously you are a a winner. Because <laughs> yeah. look at you now, look where you're at now. I had a decision to make at that point. Um, obviously, being in the system um, and getting a felony, there were a lot of jobs I no longer qualified for. Mm. Um, so I got stuck doing like a lot of telemarketing jobs and call centers and and jobs with high turnover rates. Yes. And uh, I've been fired from every last one of them. <laughs> oh, 
what would you say your reason was? Personality differences. Standing up for yourself. I prefer somebody to talk to me instead of talk at me. And that's, that, that's very important what you've just said because that's where most people go to, you know, most people of the, our country men, let's call it, and our country women. That's where we meet them at usually is at a job. Mm -hmm. And that's where they play out their subjugation on us is in the job. Right. I'm telling you, you're, you're, you know, that you should do this. There's a word they use a lot, insubordination. Mm -hmm. The way you answered me was insubordination to the rules. So you have to be let go, yeah, you they see? Don't, they don't like it. Most times uh, I've, I've, I've learned how to uh, sort of tell them off in a professional manner mm. to where they couldn't fire me for what I said, but because of how I made them feel, they looked for reasons to get rid of me. And at the end of the day, I realized that I didn't want to be there anyway. So, um, so you had to search inside yourself. Sort of, I just, it, it's, it was a bad situation for me to go through, but it pushed me in the direction I needed to go anyway, which was being my own man and creating my own path. So I'm a self-taught graphic designer. I used to draw when I was small and uh, drawing led to a, a program back in the day, you might remember the print shop. Mm, so they crazy. teach you how to like create business cards yes, and posters yes. and stuff like that. And that got me interested in Photoshop. So like junior high, high school, I've been just teaching myself because I had an interest in it. Yeah. And being on parole, you had to either have a job or go to school. Mm -hmm. And at the time of parole, when I was dealing with that, nobody else was really hiring. So I went back to school to do what I was already doing and just enhance where I was at with it. So everything that I was learning, I went back over the basics mm -hmm. of what I already knew and then I started learning new techniques and new skills to add to my graphic design. And that sort of set me on my personal path of being my own businessman. Mm -hmm. you know, and I so respect you, young man. I so respect you because what you're saying right now is what our young people out there and older people out there that have kind of got stuck as to what they can do. You see, there's a quote by Carter G. Woodson that says sometimes we give up what we have to go in search of what we don't find. Mm -hmm. And that you're saying your natural skill was this love of graphics anyway. You right. drew a lot when you were younger. Yeah, I've always had the artistic side that was, as for me, it's a, a creative freedom. You know, it's how I express. Right. And uh, it just it just fit for me. It's a natural. Yeah, I was real close to becoming a drug and alcohol counselor, though, because I, I, I like to help people. And um, a lot of people, even today, they speak to me about their personal problems yes. and things that they go through. So it was something that was natural for me. But when I went to check out the art school, it, it spoke to me. Okay. You know? And I think that a lot of times, um, we in a black community, we, we, we have been pushed or strayed away from our goals and ambitions. Exactly, you know? just like what I've said, we give up what we right. have to go in search of yeah, what but we don't find. We have to find a balance in that right. because truthfully, we usually have to do what we have to do until we can do what we want to do. That's correct. But to do what you want to do means you have to put forth the extra effort right. so you can walk away from what you right. have to do. And, and I, I, I like, again, what you just said, and, and when you think about the educational system not really having us in mind, mm -hmm. they first tell you that you have no value in their subliminal way of teaching you from elementary school to, to 12. Right. And so you come out questioning your abilities to begin with. So maybe at the time you kind of saw that you, you know, you have natural talent, but who was it that was telling you how well you did? Was there an encouragement? Did any teachers encourage you along the way that you would say? Yes, but not to the degree of pushing me. Okay. You know, and I just... Push towards sports or anything? You know, when it came to like school, mm -hmm. in high school, two years I sort of slacked off. You okay. know, chasing girls and money. <laughs> You know, uh, that, be honest, that's, 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 that's yeah. what the system kind of messages yeah. to us, isn't that's, it? That's what I did. And then, uh, yeah. 
by the time I made it to my my uh, junior and senior year, I had to have I had some catching up I had to do. Um, neither one of my parents, I mean, they supported me and they wanted me to do right, but they didn't push me. Like I graduated because I wanted to graduate. Mm. And he graduated because he wanted to graduate. Yeah, I ended up having to take for two years. I was doing eight classes a day in high school. Wow. So just to make sure that I walked the stage. Wow. And I used to be upset with my parents for not pushing me like that. And then I had to come to the realization was that I didn't need them to push me because I was already pushing myself. And if they saw that, I think they just let me, they left me to it. Wow. I love that. You know, some people would say that the parents don't, aren't as proactive, but sometimes when we just step back and allow our children to do what they need to do, they will fall and pull themselves up too. And in this situation, your parents saw that you were capable yeah. and they knew that if they interfered, maybe it would be probably harder than allowing you to find your own way because then you would be solid. Would you say that? It makes, it? it makes more sense now looking back. Yeah. Um, but at the time it was just like, you know, for me, I didn't, I just, I knew what my focus was mm -hmm. because I cared about walking the stage mm -hmm. with my friends. So for me, it was like, it doesn't matter what, what I have to do. I have to make yeah. sure that, your personal that I goal. get it right. You know, and then from there, um, I think I haven't had a regular job since 2006. I've been freelancing and um, freelancing shifted into an actual business structure. But in the beginning, it's it's hard and it's scary. Yes. Because every month, I'm like, okay, I'm making money, but am I going to make it next month? Am yes. I going to make enough money? I yeah. don't have the consistency. I'm sort of just hustling. You know, I'm hustling my skill set. Ah, I like yeah. that. So, yeah, and you made it. Yeah. Because now, look, look at so many years have gone by, and you still have I'm your still own here, business. Still here, still growing, and teaching. You know. So. I, yeah, teaching. Yeah. So you have students? Well, I find myself uh, mentoring a lot. Um, I have a young man in there right now who's... who's Which I met. Yeah, he's, he's going through uh, life and finding his way. And he's been through enough to where he doesn't have a lot of trust for people. You know, and so I felt... And, I, and I'm not ashamed of my background. Um, I've Anybody who's listening, if it helps, you know, I explained exactly what I went through. And what my mindset was to get through it and to get to where I'm at today. And I work 10 times harder than I would for somebody else. And I'm exhausted, but I love what I do. Wow. And that's why I can keep going. That's, that's huge. He loves what he does and he works much harder, but he gets value. And obviously you have an internal fate that is guiding you too. Yeah. What is, what is that push coming from? I think the seeing the value in yourself and understanding what your worth is and what you feel you deserve. I feel I deserve more, so I keep going for it. The audience, black youths, that's a highlight. He has value in himself, he's worth it. And you know, what you said is huge because this system oftentimes, like you said in the beginning when you were going through that moment in 2003, they plastered your face all over, trying to devalue you and other black youths that may see you. You know, that's one thing our medium does is anytime there's a problem out there in the world with our youths, they flash their face over and over again. So for you to say through it all in our system, you found value in yourself through your challenges and able to usurp it speaks to who you are and who we are as a people and why we're still here in the 21st century. Because somewhere along the way, we're able to pull ourselves up, straighten up and move forward. And what you do is also show honor to the ancestors and the shoulders of the people you stand and unbeknownst to you on your father's lineage and your mother's. Because it's not been an easy plight for us as a people in this country, anywhere in the world. Yeah. So, uh, so much respect for you. I appreciate it. Because you're really showing how it's done. It's not easy, though. I, I think that I found that uh, a lot of people don't have the right state of mind to accomplish that because we're so used to getting beat up and beat down uh, physically, mentally, emotionally. 
and it's a lot to deal with when you always feel like the world is against you yes you know so surrounding yourself with the right people um surrounding yourself with the right and, people and, and and encouragement like it goes it goes a long Correct. way and sometimes you even have to learn how to keep yourself encouraged yes you know if nobody else is around to encourage you who's going to do it that's right you have to do it you have to do it you know so i have a lot of pep talks with myself yes yeah <laughs> and the same pep talks i have with myself i have with my team that's correct oh that's powerful so it's, it's important and be and don't be afraid to be alone yeah because you have to learn to be yourself's best friend yeah because sometimes being alone is when you will spend time with that inner voice you know, because over time, you know, you will have to walk at times alone. And maybe when it's time to leave this world, it's going to be alone. Not maybe, yes. Yeah. But and the alone time allows for reflection. Reflection. And reflection is where a lot of growth happens. That's correct. So. Reflection, introspection. And, and uh, for me, um, as an elder at this time in my life that the, the reflection is important to look back but it's also to hear the voice and guidance to tell me what to do next and how to move you know uh, the medium you know the techie world that we're in you know the the instagram and the all tiktoks and all those things that pull us away from ourselves um, especially the younger generation. Right. What would you speak to about that? Same thing I speak to any generation. We all have to find our balance because we have to be able to keep up with, manage, and adapt to everything new that's happening without forgetting who we are. So that's what that's what the balance mm -hmm. is. It's like who who are you as an individual? How how can you be true to yourself if you haven't gotten to know yourself? Mm. And once you do that, you should be able to adapt to whatever your your surrounding is and what your environment is so that you can find your crack in the door, which will allow you to prosper. Correct. And do you think that the technological world is, is a major hindrance toward that, isn't it? Because it is without the right guidance. Right. It and is without the right guidance because I mean, technology is both good and bad. It, it it dulls our senses to a lot of things, but it also enhances the capabilities of a lot of things. So it, yes. it just sort of depends on, on where you're at with it. Where you're at and where you're at in your growth. Right. Because sometimes after you've established, you can see the value of it and use it as a tool. But when you're still finding yourself, it's pulling you here and there and telling you what you should look like, where you should be. So I think a lot of that aspect of like social networking deals with uh, self-worth. Self-worth, yeah. And if you don't know your self-worth, you're gonna get lost in that trap. So what are some of the ways for young people to start to explore their self-worth? Because, you know, everyone wakes up, I'm included. You know, the first thing is I turn off my alarm on my, my phone and you know, then I start to view what's happening, but then I, on purpose put it down mm -hmm. you know so what would you say to the young people that is trying to you know move through the world not so much with the dependency on that but just to even introspect and find themselves you know in, in this world that we're living that's changing very quickly by yeah. the way yeah you have to pay attention but you also got to know when to take a time out and as adults it becomes harder to do because we have so many responsibilities. And so as as uh, children and young adults and teenagers, it's like they don't fully know what's coming. Right. You know, and that's where the scary part is. And, and, and a lot of children are not even being prepared right. for what's coming as young adults. And so it's like, okay, if you're not getting what you need at home, mm -hmm but you're being mindful of where you're at, even as a young adult, it's up to you to surround yourself with the right people. You have to do the work too. We can't we, we can't just take handouts. Yeah. We have to put in the work. Exactly, and when we say right people, if you've not been in a healthy environment, sometimes you, you may say, well, this person is the right person because they, you know they give me what I like. You know, they give me what I think I like. But I always say that we must be aware of that inner voice. 
think the right people more so consist of who's going to push you to be a better you. And not, I mean push, not, not allow you to sit on the sidelines and, and sulk in whatever issues you're dealing with. Who's going to push you yeah. to be a better you? It may, and it will be uncomfortable. You may not even like them. You may avoid their phone calls. <laughs> but th in the end, you will be thankful that they had your back when you didn't understand. That's because that's growth. Yeah. Oh, I love that. I love that. Yes, you're correct. Who's going to push you? Oh, I love that. So you overcame it basically by doing the work. Yeah. Doing the work. Yeah, and I had help. Did you have role models? <sighs> Did someone push you? <laughs> I, had, I had I had help. Um, I had help from family and, and and a few close friends, but I was still my biggest advocate. That's just where I was at. Yes. You know, it's different for everybody. Yes. Um, but what I wanted for myself was so strong within me that having extra outside help was just that was just icing on the cake. Wow. But if I didn't have the help, I was still going to push myself. And you didn't believe the hype that is all about money and women. Fast money. You know, we need money. Don't get me wrong. We need money. And, you know, that's part of um, what sustains us in a place to live, food to eat, family, take care of family. But we have a system that made it seem like basically it's, the weapon that they use to pull us out of character and being who we're supposed to be intentionally. Yeah, it's just not what you do, it's how you do it. It's how you um, do and it. And it applies right. to almost everything. Um, but understanding your intent, like what is your intent and what is your understanding? A lot of times, because we're younger, we, again, we don't know. We haven't experienced it yet. Right, right. You know, so, so going through those obstacles, um, that's just part of our learning curve. Got you. So there, you, you, you have to go through something. You, there's no way around that. Yes, yes. No, you're correct. Uh, many years ago when I was a young woman, the quote that I used to always share with folks is, um, it's easier to succeed than it is to fail. Because once you fail, you're always going to struggle. If you found that, say, you know, I just give up and you sit there, you're just going to suffer day in, day out for years. But if you work really hard initially, then ultimately there will be a time that you could work less, spend more time enjoying the things that you like and teach it. So what, what do you think about that? I, was always, I have a friend that swears by it to this day. I hate the word failure. I hate it because it's it's the wrong way to look at it. You know, I say if you change your thought process, you can change your life. So it's not that you failed at something, it's you, you learned a lesson from that experience. Mm. So now that you've learned that lesson, how do you use it moving forward? That's good, I like that. But what I wanted to add, that when I say failure, is when sometimes when you see people that, you see them doing the same thing 20 years later, well, that's because and a lot of times they haven't, they have, they don't have more aspirations for themselves. And I, and I find that to be a sad truth for a lot of people mm -hmm. because they get, it's like they get stuck in the nine to five or they get stuck in, a, you know, there's a cap. Like if you, if you're, if you can only make $3,000 a month at your job, that's your cap. Mm -hmm. Like you can't get any more than that. Yeah. Are you satisfied with that? Just because all your basic necessities are taken care of? Right, right, right. Some people are. You know, for other people, like, you know, that's just not enough. Yeah. I want to do more for myself. I want to do more for my children. I want to do more for my family or right. those that are around me. To be able to do more, you have to be able to achieve more. And to come out of your comfort zone. Yeah. So that cap has yeah. got to be, you yeah. got to knock that out of the way. So lately, and, and maybe it's not lately, it's been a few years now, we, we see a lot of men, black men, black women, especially black men mm. on the streets living homelessly what what would you say has occurred to make that major shift not just here in sacramento where we are but countrywide i mean something happened that that kind of outed black people in our preparation or lack thereof what would you say occurred living outside of our means 
and that, that covers a lot of different things. Social networking, the media, social every everything is like we're consistently being presented with different types of lifestyles that are extreme and that we want, that would be nice to have. Mm -hmm. And they are obtainable, but the way it's presented to us is not really what it is. It's not realistic in most cases. Mm -hmm. You know, people were consistently being sold a dream, but aren't being given the instructions on how to achieve it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So we want to be like the, uh, the stars without having gone through what they have gone through. So you think that caused a lot of us to just kind of buckle uh, and end I, up on the streets? I think that we're not given enough, we're not taught the proper ways of preparation based on what it is that we want to achieve. And whose responsibility is that to do those teaching? Is it this, the educational system? Is it our parents? Is it our churches? Which I know the churches aren't really playing a big part lately in our lives. So community center. Let me just, before you answer that, one thing that I've said is, you know, the community, if it's strong, you will see the young people that show signs of greatness, which all young people do, but this, the exceptional ones, we should be celebrating and just showcasing. Now, the ones that are suffering, we should also be able to come around and guide them and pull them up and, and showcase them. But it just appears to me that we are still fragmentedly broken that we are barely making it for our own family and if we do it becomes very selfish it's me and my family well, and what's your take that's, on that that's where i was about to go with it um there's a lot of selfishness but not in the manner of you would think like it's it's not a subtle right it's 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 like we're we're sort of forced into being in the state of mind of i have to take care of me right now I don't have time to take care of you mm. I have to take care of me because we are more and more presented with harsh situations and the truth is you can't take care of somebody else if you can't take care of yourself so even today like living in California right now it's expensive a lot of people are moving but some people can't do it some people don't have the means and if they don't have the means or, or the opportunities to to rise to these uh, stipulations that are consistently being placed on us, then they find themselves like almost out of the race. Mm -hmm. This is this is why they're um, finding themselves homeless or or losing everything that they have because they 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 have not been given the proper tools. And even in some cases, when they have been, um, they haven't been given. You can have tools, and then you right. can have new tools. Right. right. You can <laughs> certain things allow you to do things certain better, and. As always with the black community, even the tools that we're given, they're they're used or they're they're almost broken, right. or, you know. But that's that's sort of how how life is. And, it's and like and our legacy, right. and our legacy, our evolution. So that leads me to the next question. Then, um, when we think about as a people, in you know, captive people brought here in captivity, um, you know climbing up out of it, coming up, evolving out of it to where we are now, we've had to kind of introspect ourselves to a new narrative. Mm -hmm. And um, part of the problem I've come to understand is that we tend to use the narrative of a system that has built their wealth and the whole country mm -hmm. on us. On our and who we are on our labor, our free labor, anything we bring to table, be it music, sports, whatever we do, and educate us. And currently, there is this conversation that is, you know, that's going on in the the educational world and the, the political world to the critical race theory, you know, CRT. You know, in other words, we want to educate you, but we are sensitive about you telling the story about the journey of your people, which shows our people, our brothers and sisters of another race, mm -hmm. when I say their people, um, being oppressive. And so 
you no. know, if, if we think that achieving goal is wealth and economic levels, then maybe that's part of the issue why we found some of our people at the roadside, you know, because, you know, what is making it? Well, nobody wants to look bad first. So when we're talking about the oppressors and people of that nature, even, even today, it's like, I can't be mad I can't be upset at, at, at a white man today for what his ancestors did so many years ago because he is not them. At the same time, that but that's on a, that's on a that's on a one on one level. Mm -hmm. At the same time, it's easy to point fingers as a race or as a collective or as a group because this is what y'all did. This is not what you did. This is what. A group, yeah, <laughs> collectively, is, right? What you guys did collectively, mm -hmm. and I understand you didn't do it yourself, but I'm still feeling the pain and the right. frustration right. that you never had to and never will have to deal with. I understand it's not your fault, but I understand why you're getting this from me. Exactly. You know, and 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 I like the way you kind of spoke of it. But what of a people that don't know? what occurred because the when you exclude that information out of your educational system and you only give one side there's an intention that you're trying to show oh, that's why and that's part of why you know oftentimes not to cut you uh, our young youth walk right into the trap because they didn't know the story they didn't know uh, that you know, it was a lopsided information that was being given to you in school. Well, that's why I said nobody wants to look bad, right? So there's so much history that's left out on purpose because a lot of times, probably to simplify it, is they don't want to deal with the ramifications of the past. That yeah, and that's that's part of it. But they they they're still benefiting from a people that don't know what happened. Right. Because, you know, if you think about the prison system, it's been privatized. It's, they need people there to work, you know, the ones that couldn't, you know. It's a system. It's a system. It, and it's still a business. And, you know, once upon a time, I, I have a son that's in his early 20s and very brilliant young youth, you know. I had him in classical piano rather than playing sports. And, you know, he went to school reading. Just a very bright young man. And, you know, I remember telling his junior high teacher, the principal, when I moved into this new school, that, you know, my son is very brilliant. You know, I was almost begging the system to acknowledge, you know, what, how I primed my son. And I said, if you could continue to encourage support you know, he will be a better person for America as a whole. You will benefit from him if you support him. But they don't look at it that way. No. And so when you see that, then you have to say, you know, in our lives, we, we have to start raising our children to play offense mm -hmm. as opposed to defense. And how does that look? <sighs> that... <laughs> because because it's, it's a little different for everybody and I say that because even in the black community we still we have levels within our own society some people are much more better off some people not so much you know so that that struggle can happen on all levels but it's it's a different experience so we have to get on the same page it's about hard. our history it's hard that, yeah and that's that's the, that's the key yeah. You know, when we're on the same page, yes, we're at different degrees in teaching, but we all must agree that we all are dealing with a legacy of our enslavement that keeps being perpetuated generationally think, in our relationship, man and wife. Uh, I think that the biggest issue, so everybody understands that. Everybody knows. Understands what? So it's like, okay, so if we come together the right way, one, there's, there's more that can be accomplished. Two, the story, the real story, the other sides that people don't get to hear, you know, which is still part of the story because you got good and bad, yeah. right? But it never gets to come out because the powers that be want to keep, keep, keep it at a minimal, right? But even if we all want the same thing, the reason I feel that it never really happens is because we are too divided and we have been 
like that for so long that it's a habit, right? Not even that we want to be divided. It's a habit of being divided because it's, for, a lot, for a lot of us, it's all we know, right? We are stuck in that, that crabs in a bucket cycle, right? We may want to see somebody succeed, right? But if I'm not succeeding with you, going back down. That's right, quick. yeah. In, in, in our, I'm from the Caribbean, and in our country, we call it bad mind. In, in America, we call it haters. You know, in Puerto Rico, I think they call it envioso. In Sierra Leone, I think they say bad hat. But in our community, there's a word for that. because, And I think that's part of the weapon in our division. So when we know our history, we know we're going to come into obstacles. But when you know your history, you will find creative ways, similar to how you found creative ways to say, I'm not going that way. I didn't know how I ended up there, but I know that you, the system supported me in staying there. And somehow within you, you found the spirit. Yeah, but I did that as an individual. Yeah. That's the easy part. It, right? it, to do it as a collective, Yeah, that's always been But your struggle. individualism speaks to those out there now that may be listening. And so, in the essence, you did as an individual, but you may have even had someone that you model after without even knowing it. But within your own self, you had some kind of confidence. Yeah, well, you know. I, for me, I had a drive. Yeah. I had a reason. I Again, when I ask, I, I, I tend to ask those that are younger than me that are still trying to figure out what they want, if they, even if they think they know what they want, yeah. the main question is how bad do you want it? Right? So, right. so, so as a, a community of individuals, I think people want it, but I don't think they want it as bad as they think they do, but they've been conditioned to be this way. Keyword condition. So community, conditioning, narrative, those are words we must pay attention to because there's some that will be the pawns, the examples we use as to why we won't do that. There'll be those that we use as the reason why we will do that. But what we must remember is as a whole, we must work together at different levels. You, you tell me your first love is, is graphics, uh, but you also, no, I think you said it was caring and being a role, uh, a mentor and teaching. These are just, they're, they're different couple, aspects of who I am. Of who you are. And it, it's both wonderful. It's both wonderful it's because even though you're cre you're a graphic art, artist and doing what you're doing there, you're also reaching the human side of, of the young youth. So you're, you're almost like what I would say, giving back, you know, teaching. Um, now, the young gentleman that got caught up back in 2003 is still in the system, is he not? Yeah. yeah so do you not. keep in touch with him at all? No. Mainly because he put me and my family in a position, he knowingly put us in a position okay. um, that could have, could have kept me away from my kids forever. And my family comes first. Yes. You know, my, my children need their father. So for me, you know, even if you wish somebody well, wish them better, because he, I'm, I'm, I know he had family. some, yeah, he had some things he had to deal with, and that's because of his upbringing, that's right. you know, but that's his story. Yes. So I've reached my, my point at, at that limit where it's like, okay, I can no longer right, right. feed into that. Right. And sometimes the way we bid some folks goodbye is just a heart when we think about it, and we just send heart love and you know prayer their way to find their way because on this journey you know we will find that we will connect with people and they'll learn from you and you'll learn from them but no hopefully no malice deep right. down you see um you know this conversation could go on and on and on because as a people uh, we our story is so riveting and so powerful. I think this country as a whole is in awe whenever they see the black man stand up, you know, the black man, you know, do anything because of who you all stand for. Because, and I'm a historian, so if you notice that I, I grasp the history, it's because I recognize what we've been through. Well, we have the underdog story. It, it, <laughs> 
we should basically based on i like what you said but we're supposed to be annihilated based on the viciousness of it and the way the nuance of how it's taken a different role into the 21st century that if you if you study it you could see that it hasn't gone it's just metamorphosized in many other ways that you have to say is that what i'm really seeing mm -hmm. and you know the, the i i would say the medium plays a very big part in it because it keeps you distracted that you can't even sit back and, in, and introspect your mind and really think about what you see yeah, but it's not the media is just the latest thing i mean there's a there's a lot of distraction and, and a lot of these these different elements, um, some that are supposed to be helpful to us, which are not always. Um, for example, government. Right. You know, government is put in place for for control. Right. right. But control isn't always bad. Mm -hmm. It's just not always good. Right. Um, I guess what I was saying in reference to the new items they're bringing into. I mean, before it's and still is the movies. Mm -hmm. You know, if you think about movies, you know, movies play a big part in telling us how to be and how to think. Well, it's, it's entertainment. We're, when we're being entertained by something, we're paying more attention. So if, you're, if you could take something that people are paying attention to and slide these subliminal messages in there, and you do it often, it, it's just like, it's like, it's a different type of nourishment. You're feeding the body and you're feeding the mind what you want it to Exactly, develop. and the effects of that is how, you know, for example, what the black woman would say she wants from the black man. I want you to treat me like I saw in that movie, you know, and what the black man may say he wants in the woman. So, you know, who controls the story controls the people. It's, so we have to be really careful, especially when we're down, when we're not achieving our goal. Mm -hmm. Where do we go for that relief? You know, so, uh, I mean, there's so many areas we could go through. I, I grew up, you know, with marijuana back in the day when it was okay, you know, not okay, really. You had to sneak and do it. Now it's like everywhere. And, you know, then we have, that's another conversation about the effects of that well, on our minds. Yeah, but I mean, like any stimulant, you know, but like, what's the difference is between what's okay and what's not okay, what's legal and what's not mm -hmm. legal, um, that itself even stems to government control. Correct. You know, because once upon a time, we was perfectly fine. Alcohol right. was perfectly fine right. until certain things got out of hand that somebody else wanted to put control on, mm -hmm. right? So then certain things became be, become um, illegal or, or prohibited. Um, but now it's like weed is legal again, right? But it took for the government to figure out how they can make their money off of it, how they can control what's coming in, what's coming out, and sort of put their hand around it. Okay, now that I got a grip on this, now you guys now can, you can do it. And a matter of fact, you know, not only do they have the ability to make money off of it, but they control the substance itself. So marijuana back in the 70s, and you know, it's very different than the marijuana of the 21st century. And so I wonder if that has uh, created a different mindset in the users now than before that may come, you know, just more comfortable and laid back. I mean, if you think about the world we live in right now, um, you know, there's a lot of jobs and not enough people to fill them. <laughs> So I wonder what is what is that what's going on when people need their jobs and um, now they and they're paying well. Yeah, but a lot of people are stuck in in a form of a depressive state, um, especially our youth right now. Like a, even listening to their a lot of the music, not all of it, but a lot of the music. Like a lot of them are real depressed. They're going through um, mental health issues. Um, I mean, a lot of these these young artists are are, are overdosing at young ages in their twenties and stuff. And you think it's like, is your life really that bad? You know, but we don't know what the next person is going through. And if they're not getting the help that they need, one, because they may not know where to look for help or yeah. where to go for help. Or two, if they try to go to somebody or some place for help and they didn't get what they need, that in itself is discouraging. Yeah. And in a lot of cases will make these individuals just want to stay to themselves. If they tried to get the help and couldn't get it, it's like, okay, well, there's nothing left for me to do but sit here and, and deal with it. Yeah. And, you know, because I was once young, 
The only thing I could say, because part of being an elder is wisdom. And wisdom, you know, shows me that what has changed dramatically is, um, number one, technology. Number two, the drugs. Because now that you, you know, you feel like I have to be more because this system medium is telling me, um, then, and when you can't achieve it, then you medicate. And once you medicate, then, you know, you, you stop doing all the responsible stuff. And, and, and when I go back a little bit to technology, the technology also makes you sit in a room with several people, but you're alone and on your phone with someone that isn't there. So there's this isolation energy going on. And most of all, we've lost, the, you know, we lost the reality about what is really real. And, and the, the role money really plays in our lives or should play. And so uh, I think people are, young people, or just people in general are depressed because they lost their sense of self and who they really should be and their connection to humanity. That's, that's, it's yeah. real big right now. Yeah. Um, and, that's, and it's a fight in itself, especially as parents. Um, because again, you want we want our, our kids to be able to keep up with what technology is, is, is at right now for the simple fact that they have to be able to adapt, they have to be able to survive, they have to be able to have certain jobs that deal with a lot of technology. Um, at the same time, as parents, it's our job to, again, give them that balance, you know, their, uh, the, their social interaction, the... Oh, when you say that we want them to keep up with te uh, technology, we want them to adapt, we want, you know, do we really want them to? I mean, I'm not saying that. It's, it's still, te te I'm not saying technology will ever go away. It's still about it's still about balance. Yeah, right? so, that's it. But 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 that's what I've been saying this whole time. It's like we can't if you can't keep up, you get left behind. And people that are getting left behind, these are the people that are being left with nothing. These are the people that are finding themselves homeless. These are the people that when they didn't take the proper steps, when they said something was coming, right? Mm -hmm. If 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 you know if you know that we're getting ready to go on lockdown again, right? If you know that's coming, and you know everybody's gonna rush to the store, yeah. get all the toilet paper again, get all this kind of food and stuff, and you just waited, you didn't prepare, right? By the time it actually hits, and you try to go to the store, it's slim pickings. It's almost nothing left. Now you have to suffer because you didn't keep up with what was going on and what was coming. Yeah. You, so you have to find that's what I, I mean see. That, I see what you're balance. saying, but see, I could flip it because I'm from a different generation and mm -hmm. say what we didn't keep up with is the knowledge of who we are and what had happened, mm -hmm. so that we could discard certain things when they becomes the problem rather than the solution. Mm -hmm. So I think the medium has become the problem rather than the solution because those that are the ones suffering the most are the ones that are engrossed in it and see themselves in a clone manner trying to be who I am every time and that doesn't feed the soul yeah, but that's, that's but not, we, uh, we could debate on that but I, I think it's a difference of, of perspective because what you're talking about is more so is more so the the, the social network and and, and self-image exactly right? but that's that's just one piece of right. the technology and that's why I keep using the word I keep saying balance because yeah. There are different there are different elements at play here, yeah. right? So we have to be able to take a look at our environment, and our surroundings, and look at what's good for us or could be good for us. Look yeah. at what's bad or could be bad yeah. for us. Look at the possible roads that we may get ready to walk down and understand both the pros and the cons. And, and I totally agree with you. I, and I remember there was a time when you know when because I've seen the seasons of technology being here. Mm -hmm. You know, when you leave your job, you close the door, lock it, you leave certain things there. Mm -hmm. But when you start to take it home, because in this little device, you can use it anytime, anywhere. I could go on vacation and be doing this stuff. So everything in life requires us to have balance. And you can see the ones that end up on the street and the ones now that become the clones in the phone mm -hmm. and those that are rising. So. We, we just have to really be aware and pay attention and that's because 
The biggest computer we have is our sense of self. It's this mind that created that technological divide. And I will be, I challenge that if we don't find time just to be still and turn it all off at least one day a week, you know, we're not gonna see that wave coming at us to take us down as hum humans. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, you know, th those moments where no media, no TV, no nothing, just you and your children, in your case, uh, your, your partner, and just being, being able to see the trees and, and all of those things. And even to question, you know, is this where I want to be? But, but we must be able to find that moment now to introspect our minds. But you have to take the time to do it. And that's, and that's what I, I'm promoting yeah. is, is finding that time. Yeah, because that, that, that's a... Yeah. It's, it's an individual job first. It is. You know, and it's that's always, why yeah. each experience, you know, there's a number of reasons why people can be displaced. There's a number of reasons why people can can really make it and be successful. You're correct. For the right and the wrong reasons. Correct. You know, but it still starts with the self. Always. You know, so if, And I love how you operated and motivated your own self. You know, and stay on that because, like I say, this system will tell the black man who he should be and the black woman who she should be if you not really have a strong sense of self. But that's also what we have to teach, and I don't exactly. think enough people are teaching it. And when when young parents were not taught that from their parents, right. they almost don't have the, the proper blueprint to pass on. Right. So now they're figuring out these these young parents now are figuring out as they go. And the problem with that is, we do have. There are. They come from. A, this is a different time than yeah, what we come exactly. from. Exactly. So this is their normal. It's not our normal. Exactly. This is their normal. Yes, you've hit it straight on. And so you know, Mr. Kevin, that's part of why I do this. You know, because I not only want to hear from the elders, and I've gotten a couple of interviews of elders in their seventies and sixties, but I also want to hear from you all, from the generation that is raising the children as to what's good. So hopefully, you know, we're connecting that dots, bridging that gap, and so that we can heal as a whole. Because overall, you know, before I close my eyes, I want to see that we, uh, we're we making it and we're not, you know, falling, going into ascension, into hell. Because I see things don't look good. Yeah. It's not looking good, not just for people of African descent, but the country as a whole, yeah, it's, it's the bigger. world as a whole. It's, it's much bigger than just the black community at this point, especially with the technology and the, and the media direction, mm -hmm. uh, because it's affecting the youth as a whole. It's affecting generations of uh, people. And that's what I'm saying now, it's, 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 we, still, we still as a black community, we deal with a lot of it, but the bigger picture at hand now, yeah deals with everybody everybody and, and, and we have the whole world here in the united states of america i say the united states represent the entire yeah. world population is here so you know we could keep going um i i've enjoyed really talking to you and if what we just basically do is just open up you know pandora box just you and i in conversation um, if you'd like to tell the audience what, where you're at and in case they want to know, come to meet you and utilize your service, you're welcome to do that. Yeah. And um, and then I'm just going to close down if you'd like. Yeah, no um, if you want to tell the audience. Who yeah, I'm you? located here inside of Florence Square in the South Sacramento area, 2251 Florence Road, Suite Number 18. Uh, my business is Media Design Professionals. And here we take care of... Uh, graphic design, we have a print shop, video, uh, video editing, photography room, uh, pretty much uh, general services to help individuals and small businesses take care of their, their branding and marketing needs. So if you're interested and might need some of our services, feel free to come down. I'll be happy to help you. Wonderful, wonderful. So we have to be the ones we've been waiting for and help each other, you know, because this young man, I find him to be quite outstanding. Thank you. Much respect to you. Um, I always like to end with two two questions. Mm -hmm. And the first one is, it has to deal with black love. Mm -hmm. 
you know, black love, romantic love, you know, is black love fading away? What is required of the black men and the black women to heal our divide? I, I didn't ask if you were married, right. um, so that I have to assume. Is, is I'm, black love fading away? Yeah. I think, to be politically correct, black love looks different than it once used to. And like anything else, everything evolves into something. Um, I think we need to get back to understanding the roots of what black love really represents. Okay. Um, but it, I just feel like it just looks it looks different. I also feel that right now, it's just, this is a crazy time right now um, in the world. And so love is important. Love is very important. Partnership. To, yeah, it's it's there's a there's a strong sense of belonging that is is a part of who we are yeah. as 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 individuals and as a community as yeah. a black community. Like we come from that. That's correct. You know. So again, balance. <laughs> <laughs> I think I caught him on that one. He said balance. All right, all right. So then, last, finish this sentence. The most valuable commodity we have as a people is? As a people. Or or just is, you know, I, I threw the as a people in, but the most valuable commodity we have is? I have to take it back to self-worth. Self-worth. Yeah, I feel like that's, that's the core of who we are and what we represent. And once we understand our self-worth, we can start to understand what we're capable of. I love that. I love that. That is the core of who we are, self-worth. Because if you understand what you're worth, you will not sell your time for nickels and dime. If you understand what you're worth, you will not let just any and anybody take your time. If you understand your self-worth, you will leave a legacy that will be talked about generationally. Well, your self-worth has been reflected today, young man. Thank you. And I thank you so much for sharing your story with us. Not a problem. You know, black man speaks. Mm -hmm. And he spoke powerfully today. Thank you. So I'm gonna be winding down now with one of my poems. Cause you all know I'm a poet too, right? And this one is called, okay, first of all, my book, Truth and Light Are One, Poetic Soul Food. You can also find it at the Florence Square, 20, 2251 Florence Road, uh, South Sacramento, at uh, Culture Collection, Miss Betty's store. And, but let me just, this particular poem is not in the book. <laughs> it's gonna be my next book. But it's, I thought it was relevant for today. It's called On and On We Go. It has been the burning desire for a son to be loved, admired, groomed by their fathers. Into a gentleman of high moral values, representing everything his patriarchal lineage deemed real gem. To be used to resist any genocidal attempts that may be subliminally set up against the physical stronger of we, the black male species. Who is wondering why so many youths are feminized by age 20? Is it not enough that the naturally beautiful, melanated color of he has offended men of every culture and economic might seems easy? It burns me inside to see how our spiritual eyes have shown us the truth versus lies, and yet we allow the fantasy of technological illusions to send you aimlessly searching for you lost somewhere out there. What will it mean if we're forever controlled by an invisible power scheme we now live in? Can we all agree 
No. Must we all agree that something of a mystery is given to humans universally to divide the we from me and they from us, her from him and she from her? Must we be afraid of the ascending tidal wave ahead? It's higher than I've seen it before. 50 feet, my friend, or more. I don't recognize where I now stand. Who stole the joy and happiness from us humans? Who made us clones insatiably designed to consume up everything in physical sight? On and on we go, where it will stop, only some amongst us know. Are you one of them? <laughs> Asheo, Asheo, thank you for another segment. And please, thumbs up, hit subscribe, share, and leave a comment. I'm proud to do my part. Respect. Respect. All right, bless.